Shalom, Shalom. Giving our praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahushai, by Hashem, Harakakwadash. Giving double honors to all the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. And rise up, the house of David is rising. Aria back at you, another lesson through the power and the spirit of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahushai. It's going to be a lesson on um, on Luke chapters 15. The, the More or less the whole chapter of Luke chapter 15. So the subheading is the lost sheep. And uh, you see here the lost coin. It's going to be um, around, the, the lesson is going to be building around the prodigal son. So we can start, we can start in verse 7 of chapters 15 see if we, what we can get out of it and see where the spirit takes us Abba Ratazar will be edifying and looking to certain words so Luke chapters 15 and 7 says I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety nine nine just persons which need of no repentance. So yes, man, you, you, have, you hear that? You hear that? The angels, man. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety-nine and nine just persons which no which have no need of repentance. Ninety-nine and nine. That's just um one less than a hundred of um of righteous unrepentance who have not have no need of repentance we, hear, we understand what that's saying anyway this, there's a little, a little bit more it says it again to um to confirm also intent it says likewise i say unto you there is joy in the presence of the angels of god over one sinner that repenteth so we're getting the idea this is where we're going with this the angels have a joy over one sinner that repentance, then over ninety-nine, one and ninety-nine, and nine who have no need of repentance, according to the verses we just looked at. So, let's carry. Let's start with this story here, the prodigal son. And this is a well-known um parable. And there's a there's a there's a martial arts movie called the uh, the prodigal son. Uh, there a whole leap of action in that movie there. But um, it's based it's based on a lot of the things they get they get it from the scriptures. But yeah, that that movie's good too. If you haven't seen it, the martial arts movie called The Prodigal Son. Holy heap of action in that. And <laughs> anyway, let me let me just read this. So he said, a certain man had two sons, and a the younger of them said to the father, Father, give me a portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. Right, let me just breeze through this, you know, and go and hit the moral of the story. Some of us know, some of us don't. Maybe that maybe some of us don't know. And and not many days after the young son gathered all together and took his journey unto a far country and there there wasted his substance with um with what? Rioters? If I'm, if I'm reading that right, with writers, writers living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Let me just see that. Oh, some of the brothers, them, they, they're really into the tech. They, they know how to do the tech, man. Me still, I learn. <laughs> so I'm using my, my, um, my phone. For the time being I had to do this right and it says he um, and the citizen of that country and he sent him unto his field let me where was I 14 and when he had spent all that arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want and when he and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him unto his field to feed swine so um he squandered his living all right he squandered his that's where we got to so far he squandered his inheritance that he he made claim of to his father and this is a where we carry on now in 16 of 
uh, Luke chapters 15 and he would fain and he would fain and have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him and he came unto himself and said how many hired servants of my father have I bred have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger so he's remembering where he came from he's saying he's, he's saying his um father's servants are doing better than him they're getting they're getting looked after better so he's um he's reminiscing on where he came from while he's out there in the um you know um, as a, he's like living as a beggar getting let me carry on and i will arise and go to my father and will say unto him father i have sinned against heaven and before thee and i am no more worthy to be called thy son make me as one of thy hired servants so he's really he, he's coming to his senses man that, yeah, that's a beautiful thing he's coming to his senses and he arose and came to his father but when he was yet a great way off his father saw him and he and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him and the son so glad to see him he's um his long lost son that's why this story is called the prodigal son and the son said unto him father i have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and i am no more worthy to be called thy son and the father said unto his servants bring forth the beast the best <laughs> robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fat calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry for this my son was dead and is alive again and he was lost and is found and they began to be merry right so they had that feast that banquet field feast that welcome home banquet feast drinking up with the yeah, let's carry on drinking up the wine and thing uh, and the good food now his elder son was in the field and as he came and drew nigh to the house he had mu he heard music and dancing they were living it up man so happy to see uh, the father so happy to see long lost prodigal son and called and he called one of the servants and asked what these things were that's his brother inquiring what is going on why are you what is this rave up all about and he said unto him thy brother is come thy brother is come and thy father have killed the fat calf because he have received himself him safe and sound yeah because your brother he's saying came home in one piece i think he's talking to one of the servants of the house yeah yeah, that's, his father said, uh, he, he, uh, you know, he's talking to the father. For this, my son was dead and is alive and was lost and is found and they began to be merry. Now the elder son was in the field and as he came and drew nigh the house, he heard music and dancing and he called one of his servants, that's right, called one of, the, one of his servants, his dad's servants and asked what these things mean. And he said unto him, thy brother is come. And thy father hath killed the fatty calf because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in therefore. <laughs> Boy, man. Would they, would they call that? Uh, he was angry and he wouldn't go in the house. They, I think they call that sibling rivalry in some form of some kind of way or jealousy or resentment. And he was angry and would not go in therefore and came came his father out in therefore and came his father out and entreated him sounds like the old the old the old um this is how they used to talk them there there <laughs> he came and he came is a uh, and he was angry and he came not into in therefore came his father out and entreated him so his father knew he was out there and he came and he he started to speak to him and he answered and said to his father lo these many years do i serve thee neither transgressed 
I at any time thy commanded, commanded, and yet thou never giveth me a kid that I may make merry with my friends. <laughs> you never got to um, get that same treatment. He wants, he wants the same treatment. But as soon as this thy son was come with hath devoured thy living, my brother, he's talking about his brother, which squandered his wealth, his inheritance, yeah? Thy living with harlots, but thou hast killed for him the fattened calf. So he's, he, and he's not, he's not lying, he's telling the truth. His brother left the yard, you know, a life of luxury, comfortable house, and went out with the money that he got from his father, his inheritance, his share of the inheritance, and squandered it. And um, maybe that part is true too. With harlots, this is what he's saying. Maybe it's true, maybe it ain't. But let's carry on reading. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me. Right. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meat that would should make merry. It was meat that would should make merry and be glad for thus thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Yeah. This is, he's saying this is your long lost brother and now he's back home. And we're giving him this little feast party here. The welcome home party. Because we're glad he's home. Not only that, we're glad he's home in one piece. So he's repented. And that's the story of the prodigal son. The last sheep. Yeah. The lost coin. Because the woman. Oh, let me read this. Because this gives you a bit of a um, bit more of a, um, you know, kind of the moral of the story understanding. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver or if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she have found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbours together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the pieces which I had lost. Right? Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in heaven. See, I missed it, but the Spirit had it that I read it this way. The Spirit had it that I read it this way. So, we get into the moral of the story again, reading this again. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in heaven in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Because, yeah, you may have had the kind before. You had no reason to be sad when you had it. But when you lose it and you find it again, see, I like the way that this is done, you know, when you lose it, and you find it again, then you're happy, you were joyful, even though you had no reason to be joyful because you had it, it was there, it was already there, just like the, the moral of the story with the son, the prodigal son. While he was there, the brother was, was um, saying, listen man, this man went and he squandered all his living, yeah, and I've been here all the time with you, and you've never brought out one of your fattened cows for me. I had a rave up for me, a party, a welcome on party for me. Well, there would, there would have been no reason for him to do that because you never left. That's the that's the point. You never left. There was no reason for me to have that welcome home party because you never left. Hence, the woman had no reason to be sad when she didn't lose the coin. Only she was sad when she was looking for it. And when she found it, she was happy. And um, yeah, man, that's the story of the prodigal son. And hence, why we're going into this. Likewise, I say unto thee, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Yeah, the new brother, which the brother put him up on my channel. He said that he um he saw he saw Yahweh, Father Yahweh. Yeah, that's the that's the um he looks like an Israelite foreigner, either Amnon or Emon, if I'm not mistaken. You know, but um we're gonna find out. He's he's pro you know probably said it already. But Elder Apostle Taha put him up on his channel, and um, uh, and I said okay, and I listened to it. He had that dream, that vision of Yahweh. His name is Neopia, something to that effect, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And um, that spirit came over me where I believe the angels. It says here, likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. So this, is, we, this was just like us. We was out there. We was lost. We was sinners too. 
we squandered our wealth <laughs> and uh, we didn't know Yahweh. We didn't know Yahweh why Yahusha. Now we do. Now we know his name. Now we know our inheritance, who we are, Hebrew Israelites. The angels are joyful. That's why we're reading this. That's the moral of the story. So what should we do? We should also be joyful too. Let's go into this, man. Let's check out some of the words in this. In in let's go into verse seven and read that. It says, um, the joy. Joy in heaven. Let's check it out. Yeah, and if you want to make it even more personal, when you came into the truth, Abu Ratazar, we're there, those lost men, those elect men, there was joy. Angels were happy. Yeah, joy, gladness, joy to receive from you. Joy received from you, the cause of occasion of joy, of persons who are one's joy. Joy, gladness. And the angels were, um, they, was, they was happy, man. Yeah, this is what he's saying there. The joy, gladness, to joy to receive from you. Because there's more joy in heaven than 99, nine righteous men who have no need of repentance, that hence the moral of the story, than one man, and a lot of us were, as a matter of fact, all of us now that are in the truth, were once prodigal sons. We were once lost out there. We didn't know we was um we was like blind men searching and rummaging through you know he he was out there he was squandered his wealth he, he didn't respect his wealth he didn't respect his original position on the whole yashua allah israel we were all prodigal sons on the whole collectively and definitely individually but now we are come back man and the, the angels were joyful and when you see a brother take his stand for the truth and say yeah i know who i am now you know he's really putting um it's a slap in satan's face and the enemy's face it's a slap in their faces but also the angels are happy more joy in heaven man let's check this other one out here the point is already made man but um this is a very very powerful powerful um story the prodigal son or parable very powerful para um very powerful um parable and uh, the moral of the story it hits hard it should do anyway because it's a powerful outcome when you put up yourselves in the picture when we put ourselves collectively as israel coming back we were once all lost and now we're found. And the angels were happy. Let's check this out. This word here. We're going to end it. The word here is. We looked at this already. We're, hold on. I don't, I don't want to go into. I'm going to go into this one here. Verse 10. We're into seven. Likewise, I unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels. All right, joy in the presence of the angels. Uh, now let's go into this, and then there's a, there's, a couple, there's a couple of words to look at. First of all, repentance. Lost my train of thought, but now it's back. Yeah, to change one's mind. The word repentance. Oh, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Charles G. Thirty-three forty. Yeah. So this is what we all did. To change one's mind. Hence the prodigal son. To repent. To change one's mind, for better. Heartily to amend with. Adorance one's past ways. He had to acknowledge he was a sinner man first. The, 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 the son of the prodigal. The prodigal son. Acknowledged he was a sinner. He, he, he went off. Which that, that happens as well. On a smaller scale. you know. But you could acknowledge your mistake. And get back on the path man. A righteous man filed seven times. But you can get back up again. So. 
there's joy when you do that when you acknowledge your mistake and you turn around yeah you make amends with adorance your past ways you make amends with you change your mind that's repentance and there's joy in the heavens for that a man acknowledging and coming back to his senses because amnesia is a real thing if you heard of amnesia when you get a bump on the head or it, or it could even be a tra traumatic experience can give you amnesia sometimes them traumatic experience are like getting getting knocked out it shock it can shock your system so the son of the prodigal he had um he he, he came to a shocking conclusion it sh the the suffering he suffered um shocked his system and he woke up because he was suffering from amnesia he woke up to back to his senses that amnesia left him and that's how this world this is what this world can do to you man and, and indulging in sin and you know the fact that we suffered in all those traumatic experiences with the tra the, the transatlantic slave trade the jim crow the lynching the castrating the alligator bait what we see happen to our children we was aware of it that can traumatize you being separated from our brothers or our sisters being separated from any one of our family or seeing them took them from us or seeing children being grabbed from their mother's breast grabbed from the arms of their parents all those things seeing that and women seeing their men uh, castrated women seeing their men mentally castrated and belittled in front of them that's why you, you see you hear all these stories women are not the, the women have no respect for the men and i know it's probably it's everywhere we hear it we hear a lot of it in america but it's everywhere the women have no respect for the men that goes back to the um the willie lynch that goes back to willie lynch the willie lynch story the Willie lynch program because it was um the, that was a psychological warfare they put upon us to dis destroy the man and uplift the woman and dis uh, uplift the son and take them make them into categories put them into all different categories if you know the story of the willie lynch letter put them into all different categories to divide and conquer to turn the man against the woman to turn the children against the parents and that's still in um that's the general rational curses up to this very day so that's trauma that's trauma and we're still suffering that traumatic experience of the willie lynch which you can talk about it you can read about it but we, what the the best way to get an idea about it, you can get a horrible vision about it, and boy, that 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 freshen it, that put it in your mind again, and you, there's all these movies now. So we understand why the woman and Jake is so bugged out. Mainly Judah, the head tribe, they're the ones get it the hardest, and even up to this day, that's why he's seeing men getting choked out on trains. And people, a lot of even a lot of their own their own tribes or other tribes, don't really um don't even want to jump in and help because they they there's a lot of self hate also among Judah and among the other tribes. There's a lot of self hate and a lot of evil eye going on. Evil eye, your eye shall be evil toward your brother. The woman, I shall be evil to a man. The man, I shall be evil to a her um, his woman. The man I will be evil towards his woman. The woman's I will be evil towards his, her man. Son evil towards sister. Sister evil towards brother. That evil eye thing going on. So that's the trauma. We're still suffering the general rational curses to this day. The Willie Lynch. But you know, we like, like this is why it's so joyful. This is why we're looking at this. This is why it's so joyful for the angels to see that we... we this is the this is the effect of this word bringing you back to your senses and healing us yeah we looked at the word repentance now we're going to look at the words angels these are the angels right these are the angels let's go in on this the angels yeah angels are not lofty as you may think Angelos. Angelos. As we may have learned in the church, some of us who've been in the church, the angels are just up there in the clouds, you know, playing the harp in front of the, in front of the throne of Yahweh, 
and that's all they do play the harp all day like just they ain't really concerned they're not interactive with humans well let's look at this a messenger envoy one who is sent one who is sent an angel a messenger from god that's why a lot of us brothers we get those visions and dreams the scriptures goes into that in job job 33 around 15 around there the angels the angels do their job they send messages they communicate they're very much more interactive than what we what we may have thought if we brought up in any of these christian churches yeah to bring tidings messenger especially an angel by implication pastor angel messenger the angels man and they were they was talking about the joy that's the angels they're they're the ones that are joyful when they see that one of us repent and there's a lot of us more and more brothers because they're brothers when they wake up to this truth and they start calling upon the name of Yahweh Shem Yashah Abba Ratazah we all enjoy and repent from our sinful ways they're now brothers and we call them brothers man whatever tribe they may be come from you know or, or Israelite foreigner that they may appear to be as long as they we we with the spirit bears witness we know the spirit bears witness witness that they are brothers mm, that's in um that's in romans 8 romans 8 and romans 8 and 16 the spirit bears witness that we are the children of yashua allah let's check this one out now sinner we're going to end it off i wanted to hit those words devoted to a sin a sinner not free from sin, uh, sinful, especially wicked, wicked, all wicked men, especially of stained from certain different uh, men, stained with certain, right. So all the stains is talking about, especially of men stained with certain definite vices or crimes, tax collectors, heathens, <laughs> tax collectors, heathens. So some of us were all into that. You understand? Stained up, our cloth will stand up. And yeah, we're sinners. We also we still sin, because that's part of being in this flesh. But for the most part, that was, you know, that was breaking the laws. You know, the the abomination things, the main things, like smoking, smoking, um, getting drunk, legless drunk. I'm talking about because you can still drink some wine, and um, adultery. Those things we don't do no more. Uh, and you know, we know about the um, the Ten Commandments. We don't do none of those things. Those basic wicked willful sinning we're talking about so we just looked at the word repentance we've turned that around yeah as they say we turn over a new leaf yeah and we're not expecting perfection we know and the most high yahweh i don't expect for perfection because a righteous man does fall seven times but and get back up again that's why we have a body we have a body of elders yeah and we have the the channel of prayer to keep us on the straight and narrow and you know what another thing that is beautiful we've got the hebrew too which i'm learning a bit more in getting more into the hebrew man which is um a very powerful as the scripture says there's a lot of power in that hebrew tongue our tongue so we're learning we woke up as now we are the prodigal son we're still it's a still a fight but we continue on that road our are we endure to the end man to get those crowns and it's all about continuing and enjoying to the end and remember the angels are are with us because <laughs> it says that we just looked at here there's more joy let me read it again man likewise i say unto you there is joy in the presence of the angels of god over one sinner that repentance in the present ah oh, missed the word let's get back i want to see that one there presence there's more joy in the in the presence that makes you know that that makes you know that they're very interactive in the presence of before yeah in the presence of before of occupied place in that place which is before or over against opposite anyone that towards each another turns his eyes their right their eyes their presence and you know there's um brothers have had dreams and visions that they say they've seen angels and you know and they feel like nice it's like the difference between um uh, a demon and an angel is that the presence of the angel has a 
it's nice you feel uplifted there's a nice um energy a good energy it's like if you had a nice strong powerful right hand side vision you wake up you feel stronger you feel edified you know that there's been a you've been in the presence of an angel when you had those type of visions there's so many things i can go into about regarding visions some of them maybe they're best kept to yourself man sometimes you wake up in a good mood you don't even know why and then you remember you you had a good vision that's why it's sometimes it's good to keep a pen and paper you know bedside which i do that now i write down some of the visions you know because in in the future you may get the breakdown of why you had that vision in the near future maybe a week later maybe a month later who knows maybe a year later you get the understanding what that vision that you had meant scripturally yeah man so that's why sometimes you wake up feeling good you you may have well have been in the presence of an angel when you were sleeping job again job 33 talks about that that's when we're sleeping and he's putting and he's sealing the um he's in sealing the instructions in us man so the angels are much much more interested in in um the, the, it's about the presence of the angels interactive than what we may think uh, so they, so when we slip up yeah maybe they're sad they, they don't want to see us slip up they want to see us fighting that's why there's times when they come to our aids man the scriptures talk about that in psalms psalms 34 and 7 man the angels encamp all around about them that fear of them that's why you, a lot of the time i remember very much and i still see them i see them chariots they're the angels I and mean, i saw them a lot when i was coming to my senses they were, and it was the angels that was taking me out of that trauma that um getting me out of that that state that sleep like state it was the angels had a lot to do with it because the healing comes in this word man the um, the, um amnesia they wake you up out of the amnesia they have a lot to do with it via this word because this word is the it, it, it actually the spirit is described as angels and elders and um apostles ex go into that from time to time the spirit is described as angels so don't we we do not underestimate that now there's one word i want to look at i've looked it up earlier yeah this word here i just i just said it said it i tapped it into google i said give an example because you you if you remember when i was talking about um i was talking about um um thomas fitherwood and and i asked it i asked it i asked the google because there's times when it just won't answer you the um um the, the, derby derby douse yeah brothers know what i'm talking about derby douse what thistlewood used to get his slaves to do to his other slave slave crap in their mouths and i asked google and the google the the the, the google woman no one talk she shut her mouth she no one talk about that kind of kind of you know so they don't deal with truth <laughs> but i was doing it as a just to make a point there's things that they don't want to give an answer to you understand but I asked this earlier, give an example of joy, right, joy, I just spoke it and it says joy is an emotion and, in, and emotions are wordless, yeah, emotions are wordless, they are pure physical sensations in our bodies, we express the emotion of joy in many physical ways, so the angels again, the angels have emotions, don't you think for one minute they just you know this that's why they uh they feel joy we looked at it luke chapter 15 7 and also in 10 they feel joy when there was one repentant sinner then 99 99 9 who don't have no need of repentance but they have joy of that one sinner that repentant they feel they feel we just looked at how they are messengers for yahoo for your shy for yahoo they are messengers so they feel for us in their interactive they're dealing with us yeah we, they are physical sensations in our bodies we, we express the emotion of joy in many physical ways for example but they're not um they're in control let me say it like that they have feelings and emotions they're in total control of them then it's not random like you know 
today with it's not it's different as you can get the idea than being in these little little um carnal bodies it's not the same it's not obviously it won't be the same they're angels they're celestial beings so it's in total control emotions of joy in many physical ways for example the jump for uh, for joy when we win a hard fought competition or we double over in uncontrollable laughter when someone relates us a hilarious story but this is what he's talking about here we're talking about when one sinner repents they express emotions they jump for joy yeah just same way where we might jump for joy when we win a medal or any anything they jump for joy in the heavens they're they're dealing with the once they de the, you know we, we know that they're interacting with us man what i've said let me let me have one more example yeah um what is an expression of joy uh works is the greatest joy of life i tapped in that or went to it what is the greatest joy of life according to google they sign with the greatest joy and acclamation children are the greatest joy in life some brothers who have children may agree with that they are the most wonderful attraction upon this earth the greatest joy of my life has been to see our children grow up and that reminds me of um Sirach 25 and 7 you know to see the fall of your enemies loosely paraphrasing and uh, and the joy of your children being brought up yeah that's the joy of man is to see the fall of our enemies and to see our children grow up with, with all their scruples together say it like that so that's kind of that's true enough so that's all i wanted to bring out that's enough we've got the moral of the story the moral of the story is the prodigal son yeah the prodigal son in luke chapter 15 the lost sheep we looked at the moral of the story the lost coin the prodigal son in seven it says i say unto you likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over 99 and nine just persons who need no repentance thus saith yahweh bahashim Shai. So we welcome all the new brothers we welcome you and we know the angels he says we know what the angels are saying here yeah likewise i say unto you there is joy again in 10 of luke 15. likewise i say unto you there is joy in the presence of the angels of god over one sinner that repentance just to confirm repetition is the father of learning giving our praises to you Bashim shai you got the moral of the story. So we welcome new brothers, man, with open arms. All praises to Yahweh Bashem Yoshai, Bashem Dash. Yes, the house of David is rising. That is why we're seeing the the awakening. The awakening of new brothers. That is why we're seeing the awakening of brothers, new brothers all the time. Because the house of David is rising and it's a slap in the face to the enemy. And everything the wicked have done to us, past, present, and future, is falling upon their own head. So on to the next.